welcome to the eighth session of Peaceful Mind Mentors. It's been two months and we have amazing people with us joining. Uh, we are going live on Facebook with 10,000 people there and on YouTube as well. It's a working day, so we are just waiting for people to join in slowly, slowly. Uh, today's guest, which we have with us, is uh, Professor His Excellency Ivo Josipovic. He is the former president of the Republic of Croatia. And a wonderful human being. I have only known him for two months and I have known him a lot about him. He's a composer. He teaches law. He's a professor of law. He has been awarded with medals. And you can see from the background of uh, where he's sitting, he has some awards lined up there, which he has got for compositions. Uh, and uh, he has been writing a lot of compositions, around 70 compositions. And, I have, uh, and he has promised me that he will send me a link. Of those compositions, which I we can typical uh, European, <laughs> if I'm not wrong. So uh, welcome, sir, and uh, it's it's uh, really honor for us to have you from Europe, from the Balkans. And today's uh, theme, what he's going to speak about, is how Balkans, Croatia, and the European Union is dealing with this global crisis. We all know that this pandemic has actually um, uh, made a world a hostage right now. So we know from Europe, we get a lot of news that how Europe is now uh, suffering this pandemic has actually created a lot of problem there. So sir, uh, let's start with you. First of all, uh, I'll go with first a very private question, uh, if you don't mind answering. Uh, how I have asked you before, but I want people to know from you, how law, politics and music, how did they go side by side? Uh, when I was very young, I was studying law and music, and my friend made jokes on me, telling that I'm bigamist. I have two loves, law and music. Uh, and later, much later, I had another love that was politics. So uh, definitely I spent different periods devoted specifically to one of three areas and now uh, after my mandate i'm trying to manage little, to the little by little all three areas having uh, of course uh, most activities as law professor so uh, it was by plan that you got into politics or uh, it was like by sudden you got into politics and then you have to obviously leave your uh, professorship and uh, use it for you know, uh, it happened suddenly because uh, I was always active among uh, social democrats, but I was always more professor than politician. And in one moment, then prime minister, uh, social democrats, uh, His Excellency Rachan asked me to join to the list to the parliament. And then I entered the parliament and I was for five years in five or six years in parliament, and then I got proposal to run for the president. I won the, the, those elections and I was president for five years. Uh, but in my heart, I was always not uh, primarily politician. I was a composer and law professor. Something which you like. Yeah. So, so, so that is the reason I didn't want to use benefits of former president. And I decided to be back on university. So, sir, is it true to say that you can leave politics, but politics cannot leave you? Is it true? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yes. Okay. So, coming to the main uh, heading of today, uh, how do you see leadership in Europe has dealt uh, with this global pandemic, and how it has actually affected the European economy? How European Union is dealing with it, especially your country? Mm -hmm. So, please enlighten us on that. So it's uh, very difficult. It's very difficult for many reasons. Firstly, uh, Europeans uh, uh, are used to have better and better life and condition. And suddenly uh, happened Corona with uh, really important impact on all, for all economies. So our GDPs in all countries is going dramatically down. Uh, especially uh, countries like Croatia are very much because our main industry was is or is tourism and of course there is no tourism during corona or it's very poor so we have uh, important difficulties and uh, secondly uh, 
this this uh, crisis, especially Corona and the economical crisis, showed some weaknesses of European Union. Uh, it showed that uh, there are still big differences among uh, members of European Union, and that there are no uh, enough efficient structures to govern crises on proper level. So, uh, for me, this crisis sends a very, very important message. And this message uh, can be read as we need more Europe. We need more uh, European uh, decisions, common decisions, and more consensus about important issues. Now, you can really recognize that even the Corona crisis is not. Uh, uh, somehow uh, dealt uh, in European Union in the same manner. There are big differences in countries uh, and uh, definitely uh, the lesson we should learn from Corona crisis is that if Europe would like to be uh, one of key players on the global scale, uh, we should transform European Union uh, in the way uh, of United States of Europe. Uh, but definitely um, that will not happen uh, soon because there is uh, one wording in Croatia that says uh, it's better to be the first in the village than the second in the city. And unfortunately, the most of politicians uh, are governed by this uh, wording. So, so, so the difficulty which the Europe has faced in this is time um, of the global pandemic, it's because of leadership, you would say, or it's because of lack no, of... No, no, uh, no, uh, definitely there is no politician who can prevent Corona. Uh, it's uh, much uh, above our possibilities. But uh, the Corona issues, uh, issue shows weaknesses of our structures in European Union and uh, shows what should be changed in, in those structures. But unfortunately, I don't think that uh, decisive politicians can understand this message. That's the problem. Yeah. In, okay. Here in Croatia, we have another problem. We have a very important problem uh, because the, the capital of Croatia, Zagreb, now I'm sitting here in my flat, was heavily touched by earthquake. And even my home was touched by earthquake, so the damages are relatively huge. And that also influenced uh, social life and economy. So we have now, we are now facing with very difficult moment in our history. Many people compare it with the war as well. We, you know that 30 years ago we had war, a very destructive war with many casualties. And probably um, uh, that war uh, put us to think more and more about European Union as a tool to avoid conflicts in the Balkans as a region. Because probably you can recall that uh, First World War started here in Sarajevo, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, all Balkan countries were involved uh, in this. Uh, it was very bloody war. Second World War was not only fight against Nazi, but it was somehow internal civil war uh, between different political and ethnical groups uh, here. And finally, we had uh, the last war in Europe. Uh, it was also very, very uh, important. Probably later I can show you maps to understand better what happened. So uh, this question I asked our previous guest also because she was also talking about the same things, but she was giving it in Indian context. So how do you see that leadership now is evolving in the post COVID or during the COVID time? How a leader should be and what leadership style he should adapt to? It's uh, not easy to anyone to be prime minister today because uh, definitely there is conflict of very important interests. One interest is to keep economy and to keep the standard employment, social stability of uh, the country. And the second one is to keep uh, population healthy. And unfortunately, those two interests are in contradiction. 
and uh, there are different attempts from Swedish model, German model, or in one period Croatian model was very successful, but unfortunately now it looks that we are going back to Corona crisis uh, and it's uh, very dangerous for such small country, especially country that is depending on tourism. So um, just a question which I had in mind uh, two days back. Uh, two days back, we had the change of the prime minister of France, if I'm not wrong. Uh, there was suddenly reshuffle. What could, is there a prob probable reason that people are saying that it's because of, that he was not able to manage the coronavirus, something like that, or it was just like a normal reshuffle? Definitely many politicians will suffer uh, and their careers will suffer because of coronaviruses. We, yesterday we had the parliamentary elections, but our prime minister won very convincingly. Uh, the second tendency uh, in many European countries, including my country, is that right parties are stronger and stronger. Uh, definitely uh, the association can be that um, people need a hard hand to deal with corona issues. And in many, many European countries, far right, even far right parties are now stronger and stronger. Uh, of course, I don't like it. I'm from the left, I'm social democrat. I'm worried for democracy. I'm worried for human rights, definitely. One of characteristics of, of Balkan and uh, Balkan countries is uh, strong nationalism. Strong nationalism was a trigger mechanism for past war. And uh, that is the reason I think that uh, center-left parties or liberal part parties are uh, better for development of society. But, uh, you know, the final word is from the people on elections and our right governing party won yesterday elections and they're going to continue. So the previous prime minister who was there, he's still continuing as the prime minister? Yes, yes. And the prime minister is a relatively moderate politician. Uh, he's pro-European, that's good. Uh, but unfortunately, his party has many members that are very right and not always in favor of, in favor of human rights. So can you show us that uh, slide which you got? For yeah, probably some history. Let me try to, to connect. Yes. Uh, share screen, yeah, that's it. So, um, so uh, you see the, the, the title, the title is symbolic because there is kid here and uh, signs of European Union. Yeah. Unfortunately, the kid here is uh, to remember us that we become older and older society. Young generation uh, uh, is somehow suffering of depopulation of our country, especially Balkan countries are losing citizens. Uh, when I started, uh, when Croatia became independent country, we had about, uh, we had about uh, 4.3 million or 4.4 million of inhabitants for India. It's just one street, I can understand it. But for us, it was moderate, moderate country here in Europe. Uh, but now we have uh, less than 4 million. That's for us very dangerous. The same tendency is uh, in other neighboring countries, in Serbia, in Bosnia, Herzegovina, in Macedonia, uh, in Slovenia. But, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, putting the question mark uh, on our future economical, political, and so on. So, um, what happened? Now, now I'll show you the map. Uh, this is, here is former Yugoslavia, those countries. All of them uh, are uh, now member of NATO, but not Kosovo, not Serbia, and not Bosnia and Herzegovina. In meanwhile, Macedonia and Montenegro became NATO member, NATO member. But uh, from this region, just Slovenia and Croatia are member of European Union. And uh, especially liberal and left politicians, uh, including, of course, uh, from Europe, we think that uh, the Europe is not complete without all Balkan countries in European Union. 
Why? Uh, not only because there is now four here on the map, but especially because historical experience that uh, European Union was not primarily project, economical project, primarily it was peace project. So we consider membership uh, in European Union as a tool to prevent all uh, conflicts, especially military conflicts in the region. So for us, for many people in Croatia, it's very important to have all these countries, especially Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, not only in European Union, but in NATO as well. But it's up to them, definitely. Uh, we cannot decide uh, instead of that. So uh, this is former Yugoslavia. My grandmother lived here in Croatia. It was then part of kingdom of uh, no, Austrian, Austrian Hungarian Imperium. Uh, it was a very uh, unique historical development. So my grandmother lived in Austro-Hungarian Imperium in, uh, and she switched to seven states without moving from this small village. Hungarian Imperium, a state uh, of uh, Serbs, Slo uh, Croats and Slovenians, then Kingdom of Yugoslavia during the Second World War, Italy, then independent, so-called independent state of Croatia, it was puppet state connected to Hitler and Mussolini, then in socialist Yugoslavia, and finally she died in the Republic of Croatia. I think this story shows how shaky is this area. Without moving from this small village, she switched seven countries, seven states. So, uh, ethnic composition of former Yugoslavia is very complicated. Uh, the biggest group were Serbs, uh, then Croats, uh, then, then called Muslims, now they uh, call themselves Bosniaks, it's very important, they uh, change their national identity, and then the others. But what's very important is the map, how the, look at how Bosnia and Herzegovina looks. It's so important mixture of different nations and religions. So uh, definitely uh, the, the main task for politicians in the region, in Balkans, is to keep peace. That's very important. That was the biggest issue of my mandate. And I think in my period, we had the best relations with our neighbors. Unfortunately, it's not the case now. So uh, uh, this map and problems of, of Balkans uh, are really uh, very nearly connected to idea of European Union. And uh, that shows importance of European Union for us. Uh, importance of multilateralism, importance of in international institutions, UN and of course uh, European Union, because we see here in Croatia, in Slovenia, even people in Serbia, Montenegro and the others, we see uh, inter, uh, European Union uh, as a tool to keep and to preserve everlasting peace. That's the most important issue, task. Secondly, definitely uh, European Union is better frame for better economy. It's very visible from our case because uh, we had uh, quite important help, financial help to develop uh, from European Union because this part of Europe is the less developed part of Europe. So we hope that uh, in some period uh, we can have the standards similar to Austria, Italy, France and the other countries. But today we are quite far away from this, uh, this topic. So uh, for now, for now uh, it's uh, enough for slides. And we can continue our talk uh, upon your questions, if you want. Yes, just a second. Uh, so the question which I have now, you are saying that European Union is something which, which has been formed to maintain everlasting peace and development with all the European nations. How far do you think that has it uh, achieved? Or how Definitely. far to go? Definitely, if you look at European history, especially big European powers, I, I think, Germans, Fra Germany, France, Great Britain, then Netherlands, uh, Spain, they, are, they were making war every 20, 30 years. 
it was disaster. Europe, uh, uh, history, of, history of Europe is history of wars, wars and wars and wars forever. But uh, those countries who joined European Union never had war between each other. And that's very important. So uh, the reason the, uh, for me, especially for me to vote to be member of European Union, I'm very proud because I signed the, the, the uh, accession uh, agreement between Croatia and European Union as a president. Uh, the main reason uh, is peace, economy as well. But uh, if there is no peace, there is no economy, there is no prosperity, culture, anything. So uh, I consider the peace as a, the peace as the most important uh, achievement of European Union. That's true. So we have a question uh, from uh, Mr. Satyam. Uh, he has been a regular uh, attendee of all the webinars. Uh, what will be the major challenge and problems of our generation after COVID-19? Definitely. Uh, the, the biggest problem for young generation will be uh, employment and economical security. Because uh, prediction is that uh, GDP will be cut from 30% to even more, 50, 60%. It's a uh, uh, regression that we haven't had uh, uh, for many, many years, just it can be compared by World War War. And uh, that's uh, the biggest problem. Uh, the, definitely, that problem generates also a problem of possible radicalization of politicians and politics and political parties. We show it, we show, uh, it was shown as well before the Second World War. It was very clear. It was big economical crisis and then uh, very destructive authoritarian forces uh, started war as a tool to recover. Uh, unfortunately, we know what were consequences of it. But uh, we always says that uh, historia is magistra vita. That means the uh, the, histo the history is teaching us. But we are very bad pupils. We always says after any war, never again we are going to keep peace. So and so, but always we start new and new wars and conflicts. We always forget, uh, even in one generation, we forget what uh, war really means. So, but, but um, like, you know, when even I have been reading about all these things, the economy breaking down, money is not coming in and either it is going out, people are getting unemployed, etc., etc. The youth of today is actually into a lot of conflict because we cannot blame for everything and anything to the government, you know. We just cannot keep on blaming the government that the government is not doing anything. We also have to do something for our, uh, ourselves. So what message do you have for these youth, especially, who are actually into a lot of conflict now? I understand uh, your question. Definitely, in any society, the government cannot do everything for all people. I think self-confidence, especially for young people, is very important. And uh, those young people who are capable to run some private business have advantage. But uh, unfortunately, we have to be realistic. Just small portion of population can run a uh, good and successful business. It's uh, very important to understand that there are also many cultural and political uh, differences in societies. I've been in India, not once. And I saw that everyone is doing some small thing or everyone is trying to make something in China now as well, but in some European countries, including my country, uh, when there is tradition of a state taking care of social issues, uh, trying to be uh, fair for everyone, to obtain fair life for everyone, uh, somehow uh, there is tendency to be passive, to expect from the country uh, from the state to help or to provide a uh, working place uh, or whatever. Uh, and definitely in time of crisis, it's not possible. But psychologically, people tend to blame someone. And who is to be blamed? Government, of course. So many governments are going to have a very hard periods and many politicians even suffering for, uh, from those things they're not guilty for. 
there is one question which has come up sir uh, is that true that you want to be a green president of croatia what does the term green president mean or oh, green yeah i uh, i never uh, declared myself as a green president but i supported the uh, green economy what does it mean it's clean economy uh, and uh, turning to so called fourth industrial revolution uh, clean sources of energy and transformation of of uh, economy not only because of ecological reasons but because of uh, awareness that definitely uh, industry science are uh, going to new direction new direction uh, there is a definite good way for those countries who are uh, taking care about good education involvement of new uh, technologies and who care about development sustainable development uh, from the other side uh, i think those countries who are not, not willing or not capable to accept new 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 industries new technologies new science uh, in future they are going to become some kind of new colonies <laughs> so so basically now clean energy green economy clean presidents clean prime ministers everything is the way future but the but everything the, clean yeah <laughs> everything clean that's very true sir uh, i mean i have asked you before but i would like the people to also know about it um, would given a chance would you run for presidency again if given a chance no because uh, you know it's very hard to be back it's very <laughs> hard to be back i enjoy my status of former president Uh, because many people remember my mandate as a good one but uh, circumstances were dif different and not very in favor myself uh, on my second uh, run for presidency so i lost for one point one one percent something like that uh, and uh, you know the comeback is not easy uh, i think uh, i can better serve as a former than as a actual president Acting especially in this period of crisis but we'll see you never says never yeah you never say never yet yes yeah. and and um, to all the audience i mean he is one of the persons uh, whose motive in life is that any major challenge for any politician is to fight for peace and they have to fight for peace sir i want to ask a question here and the last one before you we wind up we talk about peace everywhere even in the un eu au between countries then why is there no peace we are working for it we talk about it but why there is nothing no peace because uh, human beings are not perfect because many people consider war as the best business yes for many of them the war is the best business in the world uh and uh, because uh, some kind of uh primitivism and thoughts that uh, we should govern the others we should conquer we should be rich on the others expense and this is a lesson from the whole history look at in your history in my history in my country in different cases who are the most popular persons from the history big winners in the wars in principle if you uh, ask uh, french people who is the biggest french person napoleon if you ask greek people who is the biggest alexander the great yeah so uh, that's uh, very very tragic for human being yeah, of course in my countries um, um, warriors are also ce celebrated but Uh, then i always enter in in some kind of polemic telling that uh, in croatia the most important politician in our history were people who changed croatia towards modern european country especially in 19th century when our national sentiment was formed and we started to become uh, important european uh, country and nation so so what are the sorry again a question just popped out sorry yeah okay 
what are the challenges uh, which obviously the world will face uh, especially the europe uh, will has to face in the coming future because this pandemic is not going to get over and when we were talking with the dr david nabaro who is the who on work of covid 19 he said that there is a second wave which is going to come from the us and the europe again so what are the challenges and how we have to be prepared for it as from your perspective so uh, definitely when you see what's happening in the world you can easily recognize that there are uh, uh, places on the map when big powers are having a chess game very bloody chess game like in syria like in uh, somalia or some other country and uh, i'm always very worried that they are going to decide to move this chessboard as example from syria to balkans it can easily happen it depend on their decision their ambitions or misunderstanding of uh, of societies here and uh, it's uh, very important to have uh, politicians on the board in all countries especially small countries devoted to multilateralism negotiations and uh, idea of peace because the war can be definitely tragic for everyone especially for small nations but unfortunately uh, as i told you um, there are too many politicians building their political career their economy power on the war they consider really the war as the best business ever yeah and uh, that's a big disadvantage of uh, global politics is that, is that notion going to change ever i, I have is that is that notion of war is the best business going to change ever I'm not sure I would like to see this but definitely during my life uh, it will not happen. It's quite difficult sir because many people yeah. talk peace yeah. but there is no execution. And and you know the world scene is very dynamic. Uh, let's look what happened in international relations after last American elections after Mr Trump became the president. For many uh, of us who has idea of multilateralism of unity of the world of uh, global values it was a disaster unfortunately now who knows who will win next elections and mm -hmm. it can dramatically change yes. change the world map yeah would you would you like to comment on uh, who's who the about the next elections the us elections just going to happen in the no i cannot influence it uh, i can uh, of course uh, wish that such important and the biggest power in the world has someone uh, who is reasonable and devoted to the peace and cooperation as a president but it's up to americans <laughs> it's up to americans fine so, so we wind up here and uh, just before we wind up we have three four things um, uh, sir we have one more initiative which is coming up but we are going to announce it in october i will send you the details of it it's something relating to mental health of course you are not from the field of mental health but when you support peace and you support uh, mental well being so we would like to have you on board uh, we have okay. the former president of mauritius who is going to be the patron of the organization and i will send you all the details regarding that very soon um, next uh, session we have on the 11th of july with the former minister of health from france who is going to talk about public health and the union of public health she is building up to fight the covid-19 and telling people that uh, public health is more than just what we think uh, before winding up can we have a quick e photograph with the, the former president uh, naman okay. can you or tanvi can you click anybody can click i don't have a phone how can, do i have to do something no no sir you just have to smile that's all okay Tanvi, can you play? One more, one more. Okay. Done? Fine, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. I enjoy our conversation. And hope to see you again very soon on our board. Um, thank, thank you, everybody. You. Thank you. And see you on the 11th. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.